the absolute most common questions since 3.25 has come out that I have gotten is, is Blight good? Is it profitable? Should we be running it? Do you like it? And I'm double checking my notes. Does, and I quote, the salvage towers do anything? A lot of people have been asking. And this tower has been the most interesting talking point on stream. So like, if you like, if you're here during Twitch or on YouTube, the most biggest talking points is probably this stream, Templar Ingenuity. This brand new node, in my opinion, is insane. I think it is very, 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 very good. And we're going to talk about why and how it works and what I've learned and what I think it does or how I think it works in all my testings and stuff. The node reads that blight towers in your maps can be salvaged after the blight encounter. Higher tier towers grant better salvage rewards. Salvage rewards are improved for each different tower type built during construction. So pretty much what that means is and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna grab paint for this one so we're gonna have a moment when i go into a blight and i use the little blight thingy and i build a tower the tower has six options right so it like it it, it kind of goes like this right and there's like six options and there's six different towers right so there's like the Sentinel Tower, the Cold Tower, the Stun Tower, or I guess this is Minions. So the Minion Tower, the Fire Tower, the Ice Tower, and then there's the Lightning Tower, right? So this node says that for each one of these towers that I build and that I max out, my rewards from salvaging then get better and better these towers go to four ranks they go to rank four at rank four each of these towers split off into additional tower types so like arc so like lightning becomes arc and shock minions become scout and something else cold becomes chilling and glacier or glacier and something else stun becomes like stun one stun two fire is meteor flamethrower and so forth and so on so each of the six towers becomes 12 and then each of the towers at level three is a different tower so initially it reads that the individual tower types like chilling fire lightning should scale that and it should be six types but in testing I have noticed and other players have noticed more loot by upgrading as many different types of tower towards the holy number of 18. So originally you would do blight on an indoor map because you wanted to have one lane, but now I think blight accelerates by having blight be outdoors with multiple lanes and multiple towers. This node becomes really hard to use properly. A lot of people have said it's bad. It doesn't work. They can't do things. It's not doing what they want it to do. X, Y, and Z. And I think everybody's been doing it wrong. And I'm going to showcase why. I have three maps prepped. All three of them are white tier maps. No nothing, no specialties. And we're just going to talk about the best way to do this. Now, in terms of my Atlas and how I have it set up for the Templar Ingenuity, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. We take every single Blight node except Cassius Pride. Cassius Pride is like, we don't want to kill the mobs too fast. So Cassius Pride is going to like immediately nuke the mobs and ruin all of our plans. So to really do this strategy, you have to be like, you have to have a character that's pretty, pretty efficient and you have to be able to build towers without really struggling. Because if you struggle and you panic and you freak out, it's like not going to work right like it's all gonna break and it's all going to like go to hell so we're gonna take templar's ingenuity and we're gonna pair it with all the other blight nodes and the blight stuff the big takeaway is when we build towers 
we have to be able to get enough juice to be able to build the towers and that's why blight spawn is really important and why we need a character that is really strong because blight spawn creates a lane in our maps with tons of bosses and each one of those bosses gives us tons of building materials so this node with bosses for building material plus this node go really hand in hand together in giving us the ability to make all the different towers to salvage them on top of that we have immune response immune response gives us 50 percent more non-unique monsters but they also spawn faster but we get 50 percent more monsters more monsters more materials more materials more towers more towers more loot more loot from upgrading towers more towers upgraded more loot so forth and so on so things to others so like consider and why one of the reasons why we take all of the nodes the small nodes here reduce the cost of building the towers and upgrading the towers these small nodes here give us more chance at non-unique monsters these small nodes here give us more encounters and chance at blight we have more non-unique monsters there these nodes here give us all chance at blight encounters these nodes here give us additional reward chests and make them lucky when i tested and i'm not 100 percent yet but when i took these nodes off the salvage towers seemed to be worse when i put them on they seemed to be better but i think the biggest thing scaling the salvage towers is this node outside of that we take these for more damage so we can deal more damage to the mobs we take this so that we have more chance of blight in maps we take fungal horizons so that well we just get more blight in maps old school logic and mentality with this node was great you would do toxic sewers you'd have one lane you'd get a ton of maps you would get a ton of like cool stuff now with this lane and this node having more maps or having more lanes makes more towers and when we complete a blight encounter fungal horizons gives us a chance to get more blighted maps i've actually seen more blighted maps running fungal horizons and deconstructing towers than i have like doing it any other way this has been like absolutely insane and then lastly we talked about this this just gives us more bosses and more chance at additional reward chests now that we know how that all works and what we're gonna do let's talk about the maps i'm not running any scarabs right now scarabs are just way too hard to get all the groups are doing blight blight invigoration scarabs are just unobtainable and just blight scarabs are just insanely hard to get so my current plan has been to run these maps as is the first map that we're going to run the basic defile cathedral um will be to just showcase the deconstruction and how it works i'm purposely running defile cathedral because i want to find the seer on defile cathedral i want to scry off the apothecary to a map that i want to do and because we're changing the way that we're handling blight and what we're doing i would like to move it to a wide open map and we'll showcase why a wide open map becomes really important usually i would like spend some time clearing the whole map to get gold but for the sake of the video and the sake of explaining what's going on we're just going to run to the, the cassia and we're going to showcase it i know somebody's out there going to be like oh my god you should just cut to the the blight and you should just be like at the blight and showcase the blight but i don't want to have cuts i don't want to have weird edits i don't want to have things i want everybody to see what it is and how it works exactly how it's designed without any interruptions and any problems we're actually not going to take any altar bonuses we're not going to do anything else we're gonna we're gonna get these mobs out of the way so we don't have any problems and then we don't have any loot and then we'll showcase what's going on hopefully fingers crossed we don't get screwed and only get one or two lanes so we move all the mobs we get all the loot out of the way we pick up our gold so we don't have anything to do and we go to do the cassia the first thing when this spawns and when this starts is we're going to identify which way the lanes are going and we're going to see we have a ton of towers to work with the first thing i'm going to do to make my life super easy is i'm going to build a chilling tower an empowering tower and a stun tower we're doing the chilling towers because we have the chilling towers freeze we want to make sure that we don't get overrun we don't get killed and we don't die we're going to build these up and we're just going to have the holy trifecta of stunning mobs as long as none of these lanes are freeze immune we should be okay now is when it gets a little hard and a little tricky and we want to make sure that we're doing things right the first thing i want to do is i want to identify where the bosses are coming from and we see that they're going to be coming from what looks like this lane is going to have a boss and then another lane is going to spawn a bunch of bosses so we see right there the bosses are spawning 
and we're just going to build up the chilling tower the empowering tower to three and we're just going to start gaining resources and materials this is where things get a little hard and a little tricky i'm going to start in the back here I'm going to build a tower. I'm going to make it an arc tower. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make this a stone gaze tower. And then I'm just going to like not build up anything else. We're just going to keep this really simple. And we're just going to, we're not going to build anything else. We're not going to upgrade any more towers. We have one, two, three level four towers. And we're doing this map like that on purpose. The reason why we're doing this map like this on purpose is so that we could showcase the difference in loot and how it works. We see right away we have a salvage bounty and a salvaged horde. And the difference is between tier four towers and tier one towers. Now, because we didn't build a bunch of different towers and we didn't upgrade a bunch of different towers, we're going to see a lot less loot compared to the next map. So if I hold alt here, we see there's no loot outside of this exquisite leather and this leather belt. And we're going to click on this salvage bounty. We see we only got three pieces of loot. Very uneventful, very shitty. We come over here, we click on this bounty. Yes, a lot of stuff is filtered out, but we see a lot of looks at potential loot. We come over here, same thing. Lots of looks at loot. We even get a contract. Come over here, grab this one. We get some bubble gum. We get a belt and some looks at loot and some looks at loot and some looks at loot and a gem. I know you're going to say, wow, very uneventful, very not good, very mediocre. And yeah, it's not the best. We didn't upgrade our towers. We didn't set it up. We didn't do what we were supposed to do. We pretty much just kind of like click things and hope it was going to be good enough. Now we're going to leave this map and we're going to do it again. We're just going to dump all this off, really. Oh, no, I need this. Okay, wait, I need this. Give me this. We're going to dump this off and get rid of these. And then we're going to get rid of that and this. And then we're going to go put in the next map. And we're going to do exactly the same thing and showcase the difference between the first map and the second map and then the third map. So we're going to come into the final cathedral. We're going to hope we get the name of Seer, which we don't. We're going to dump this loot off and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to quickly look for the blight to showcase how it works, what's going on. And in an attempt, we're going to try to build as many towers as we can before the blight and the Cassia ends. The hardest part about doing the salvage thing and the salvage strat is literally getting all of the towers built before your towers and your stuff kills, you know, the blight and ends the blight i'm even gonna skip the ore for you guys uh is it this way no it's not that way. it's this way all right all right all right so we're gonna do the same thing we're just gonna drag this beast down over here we want to get rid of it really quick we want to make sure nothing interrupts our towers so we can get a real good look at what's going on and we should be pretty much set in stone if for some reason this cassia decides to only give us two lanes because it happens we'll do it again and then i guess just be sad about it Okay, let's get you out of the way, and then let's start this. This is the worst nightmare. <laughs> this right here is the worst. Okay, we're leaving. <laughs> we're not even going to bother. We're not going to get loot. We know it's not going to work. We're just going to leave. We're just going to leave. We're just going to grab another fields. <laughs> we're not even going to bother, man. We're just not going to bother. This is why indoor maps are bad. This is literally in real time, in real time, why indoor maps are bad. In old scenarios of Blight, it would be perfect. It would be great. You would be jumping for joy because that would be the ideal setup to get Blighted maps. And that would be ideal. That would be great. That would be everything that you wanted. And, well, I'm kind of glad it messed up because, like, yeah, sure, I lose the File Cathedral and I lose the Blight. But you could see, you could see in real time that two lanes, three lanes, two towers... Boy, we build barely any towers we ain't getting loot. We sure as shit ain't getting any loot on that. So we're just going to we're gonna call that one a wash. We're going to come on over to Cassie over here. And we're going to pretty much do it again. We're going to clear out the mobs in the map so we don't have any distractions. Normally, you know, without explaining things, you would just click on the Cassie. You wouldn't worry about all the mobs. It would take a lot less time. You wouldn't be creating a YouTube video. You wouldn't be explaining what's going on. You would just click things. And we're going to click our Cassie here. And we're going to see we have five portals of lanes it's a nice straight shot we get a tower there we get a mob there we get a tower there we get a tower there there's a tower there and as the event starts we see there's only two portals there's a portal there and the portal there there's another tower being built right now and cassie is just going to give us more towers and essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to do the exact same thing again we're going to start we're going to build a nice chilling tower 
We're going to build a seismic tower, and we're just going to set it up so that we have our trifecta so no mobs can really get through. And we want to make sure that we identify very, very, very quickly which one of these portals are spawning the bosses. And you'll see the bosses right away. You see they're right there. Here they come. So now we build our, our, our freezing tower. We hope to God it freezes them in place. They're all stuck in place. And now we're just going to kind of clean up. We're just going to kind of clean up a little bit and start getting some blight juice. And we're going to start building as many different types of towers as we can to get oh god um the maximum amount of rewards that we can get so we build this to stop the mobs from getting over there we come over here we check on this we do this and we wait for these guys to get out of the way okay one thing that i will note and i will say is i have noticed that you do get more in terms of rewards and you do get term it more in terms of towers and everything if your maps are rolled properly so what i mean by that is if you spend the time to run eight modded juiced maps you will see more of everything i've noticed that blight in itself scales pretty heavily off the quant and the pack size and everything else going on on the map the reason we're not doing that for this test right now and the reason why we're not doing that here and build that before it done the reason why we're not doing that here is we want to have a very good sample size and a base of pure white maps because we can't replicate the same amount of quantity and pack size on multiple maps so we see here we have salvage bounties salvage horde and we have our pustules and you can see right now all of the extra loot tiles that our blight gives us now we built a couple more maps they weren't great you know we we built a couple more towers we didn't really get that nice trifecta of 18 but you can see once again just tons of loot coming out of this thing sure it doesn't ping the loot filter but that happens right like sometimes you roll bad sometimes you don't get good loot i have gotten valdo boxes i have gotten divines plenty of people in chat have gotten divines and valdo boxes plenty of people have gotten tier one uniques it's just like anything else that you do the more you juice it, the more you run it, the more you see loot. I mean, look at this one. This one just had tons and tons and tons of loot. And then we come over here. We grab the rest of our stuff. We're really happy. We got some scarabs. And then we're going to do one more last quick test on what's going on. And we're going to take a nice map. We're going to roll it up a little bit. And we're going to just take a look at what's going on. And you can see, look, just tons of loot coming out. I think, sure, somebody's going to be like, oh, my God, it's not the most spectacular loot. But for one point it's more loot and more looks at loot and that's all that path of exile is is more and more looks at loot and the more that you scale and juice your blight the more you're going to get opportunity costs for better and better and better things to show up so let's just put these away really quick we'll dump this in a tab we'll go back to our maps tab uh we'll dump that here go back to our maps tab we're going to grab another fields map and we're pretty much just going to do exactly what i said we're going to do we're going to chisel this map we're going to alk it. We're going to take a look at it. We'll throw some of these on there. So it's like nice and juicy and good. It's got 104% quant on it. And we're going to stick it in the map device and we're going to roll. <laughs> this one's going to take a little bit longer, maybe another minute or two to find the blight. We're going to skip the deli for right now because to my knowledge, deli doesn't affect anything. And we're just going to kind of run over here. We're going to make sure she's not over there. Come down over here. I'm so glad I didn't find the seer. I would have been so sad if I would have accidentally found the seer while doing these. Oh. Hopefully we don't get one lane. Hopefully we get a nice little spread and she's not stuck in a corner. Hopefully we able to get the beautiful trifecta of towers that we want to see and we can get a little bit of a better look at what's going on. We're going to clear out the mobs again because we don't want to accidentally die right around Cassia and we really want to get a good look at what's going on without struggling. And without craziness, I'm going to try to bring these guys down over here so they're not a huge pain in the butt. Bring them down over here. Get them a little poisoned up. Move them out of the way. Or they'll just never die. It's fine. Poison builds are great. I actually really like when I'm playing a lot. It's really good. All right. Okay, everything should be moved. 
and out of the way so we can see what's going on. All right, so we're gonna click on this one. And once again, we have five lanes. They're all over the place. We have a handful of towers and we're just gonna build it on up. And we're just gonna make sure I built double of the same tower, which I guess was an accident. I'm human, forgive me. And this is the boss lane right here. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna focus on killing that. We're gonna leave them for later. We're just gonna farm up a bunch of the, the juice. And we have a tower lane over here that we totally forgot about. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna build this up. We have a bunch more towers up here. This is perfect. This is exactly what we want. We're gonna focus on the towers over here. And we're just gonna build up a bunch of towers and a bunch of lanes. Now, as you need more juice and you need more things to scale your towers, you can actually like come down here and like pick on one of the bosses and kill a boss because you'll see that bosses will give you like these guys right here. Like they're just gonna give us tons of building materials, right? So we come over here, we kill them a little bit. We're gonna put a portal in case we die. And now, now we're racing. Ah, our favorite, everybody's favorite. No, sir, 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 back over here, sir, please. Thank you. See, he gave us 300, just enough to come over here, grab this and level that up, level this up. And the biggest problem that you're going to have at the end of the day doing this is slowly killing these mobs. I know somebody's gonna be like, oh my God, you're slowly killing. You know how much faster you can do other stuff? And you're right, you could just not. You could just not do this, right? You could just like ignore it, but like now we're just gonna do this. We're gonna upgrade this one. We're gonna upgrade this one. We're gonna do this. And we're gonna make sure that we try to get as many different types of towers as possible. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make it back up here, but it happens and you can see right now, let's just get this guy out of the way. We're just gonna move him over there. We're gonna blink over the wall and you see all the reward tiles. And then we come over here, we click on this one. And look, there's the, look at look look at how much more loot came out of that. Same thing with this one, tons more loot. We come over here and we click on this one. Just once, it, look look at it all. It's insane. It's crazy. I know somebody's like it's not, but look, just more and more and more looks at loot that you just wouldn't have if you didn't do it. Do I think it's better than, I don't know, like Expedition or something? I don't know. Do I think it's good? I think it's absolutely insane because like I've said, I've seen Divines. I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff pop out of these things, all kinds of stuff. And I think a lot of people who initially tried it just weren't doing it right. And I still think, I still think this isn't even the best min maxi way to do it. I'm sure this will scale better with like things like certain scarabs, more modifiers and just other different kinds of ways to do it. My main goal so far over the last couple of days hasn't been to find the best scarab combination. My main goal is to make sure that it works and that we know what we're doing. If I were to do this again and I were to go more deep or invest more into it and just bring it up higher, I'd probably wanna just scale the rewards off of Blight itself I don't think there's going to be a lot of ways to scale the rewards off of the chest. I think the chests are literally handled and scaled by just this, but you have the opportunity to, for one point, take this plus everything else and pretty much do what a lot of people are doing, which is scaling Blade to the Moon. And that's pretty much done if you want to use Scarabs. These Risk Scarabs are supposed to be really good, but they make your maps really, really, really difficult. There's another Blight Scarab of Blight of Invigoration that's really good where you get to do a lot of really cool things with empowering towers. I currently don't have one to show you, but if we go into the Scarabs here and we just search Blight, we can do this, which I also think is really good. We have this that we get to test with. This plus this plus Risk makes things really interesting. And you just can really take Blight to a whole nother level by doing an outdoor map and spreading it out. Now, that's not to say that farming Blight in maps isn't really good and really profitable but i think there are better ways to make more out of this while recording this i'm being told from twitch chat because we're recording this live that my boy jingles just got a valdo map in real time from doing this and like i said i've had other people message me and showcase me i literally had somebody message me and say that they got right out of the salvage they got a divine my buddy tat too the same thing earlier today 
he messaged me and he's just like hey man i did a I did a thing a, and a blight a divine orb popped out of a salvage tower so there's there's loot in them there's loot in them and it's just gonna be like everything else where you just have to do them and run them and do them right or you're not gonna get anything so i hope this helps i hope you learned something if you've tested it you tried it it worked tell me what you did you tested it and tried it and you thoroughly tested it and it didn't work tell me what you did maybe i'm missing something maybe you guys can think of something maybe we can find another way to take this to the next level or something that scales it or more modifiers that scale it because all i know right now is the bigger the map and the more stuff on the map the more loot that you just saw comes out of these things so i think there's a way that we can really juice this map up or run them in tier 17s and just really kind of take it to the next level but for now i just wanted to get the outright basics of how it works out and just give you guys a really big run through of how like you know how to use it how to start working with it how to make currency using it and to not just go well this is the worst one point i've ever experienced in my whole life yeah! but anyways for now friends i'm gonna get this video out to you guys and i'll see you all in the next one